Jojo has fun. Welcome back to the show, guys. We're doing Lights Out. It is a level in Crash Bandicoot that neither of us care for, and if we could die, we would. It's uh, not as bad as the bridge level, but nothing is as bad as the bridge level. I mean... Uh, Currently, we're discussing foods that go well with deviled eggs. Joe's pretty sure it's not hot dogs, beef certain. or otherwise. Yeah, I mean, make, okay. How about uh, okay? Here's I'll meet in the middle. How about like a bratwurst? Oh yeah, like I have those sausage. at home too. I have a lot of different kinds of sausages in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that twelve year old Jojo? Did I just meet him for a second? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> I went yeah. Because I said bratwurst in freezer, and he went. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. I don't know what I mean. Just keep laugh. dying. Yeah. That's fine. I don't, uh, Cam, I don't need your permission. I know. <sighs> I'm fucked now, though, because like I didn't jump, and now it's now it's over. Well, that's what the the pews are for. You think? The pew pews. Yeah, I do think. Don't go out light. light Just too. like your soul. <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, out. Like a light. Like a light. Solid as a light. Solid as a light. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, I fucked myself real hard. Lubeless. You fucking... Lubeless in Seattle. Pulled your pants down and Sweetest shit all over you. Oh my god, I did. Uh. I think that those apples just come... In. No, they don't. You have to touch them. Oh, wow. That was close. Checkpoint. Got two there. Okay. Okay. Hey, we're doing okay. I like that you can spin them or you can... Bouncy. Bounce them. Love the bouncy. And they don't flip over like fucking turtles. Fuck turtles forever. Oh, I love turtles. They're my pets. Do you still have a pet turtle? Yeah, I have two. They're cute. Do they have names? Yeah, Buddy and Shelly. Wow. How old are they? Um... Oh, no. One's like, I want to say five, and the other one's like six. Pretty old for turtles. Wow. Actually, no, not old for turtles. It's young for turtles. Well, for like home turtles. Yeah, I guess that's true. Game over. I just realized the other day that my cats are very old. Jeff, how old are your cats? Pretty young. Yeah? Jeff has young cats. <laughs> like the young Ew. ones, the young kitties. Oh, really? Six years old is pretty young for a cat, Jeff. So Stay when when we got Gray Cat in 2007, which came with your house, right? No, no, no. Orange Cat came with the house right. in 2000. That was 2013. Um, in 2007, when we got Gray Cat, she, we were told she's between the ages of two and seven. How could they tell that? I, I don't know. Based on her teeth, she was either like a good, like a really good-looking seven-year-old or. Uh, Ridden hard and put away wet two-year-old. <laughs> um, it's a weird way to describe a cat. I should <laughs> um, anything. Uh, but anyway, so so that's what happened with her. And so then we, re but then we realized that that was, that was 10 years ago that we got her. So she's probably two. So she's either 12 or much older than 12. Um... And then Orange Cat, when we moved in in 2013, um, was over the age of eight because Ooh. the person who lived in the, like, the house next to ours, when she moved into the neighborhood, he was in the neighborhood as a feral cat. Interesting. Um, and does not ever remember having like him being a kitten. And that was four years ago. So he's minimum 11 and she's minimum 12. That is an intensely old cat. They, they're pretty old, especially for being, like, feral outdoor cats. Yeah. The average age of an outdoor cat, they on average, they live to be two. Oh, um, because of how dangerous it because is. Because of how dangerous it is. Yeah. So you'll get, like, a really old feral cat occasionally. But for the most part, they all get hit by cars or eaten by larger animals. Makes sense. Yeah. Given the, given the, the harshness of woodland yeah. in general. Yeah, woodland is rough. <laughs> um, God, Orange Cat was so fucking disgusting when we first got him. He was... Just covered in gasoline. I remember you said he was so greasy you could only touch one spot in his head. Yeah, he had this one spot that I, but he was like so affectionate. He would stand on his back legs and you could just like pet this one little spot in his head. It's adorable. And he had like all these like oozing, bleeding sores all over him. Ew. Where he had like Ow. gotten stuck on things and his skin had ripped. Ew. Yeah. Uh, and he just 
broke his legs and dragged him behind him. Really? Yeah. That's when we decided to bring him indoors. Like he actually broke his legs? Like, yeah. Just... They, I mean, they were, they were unused. Like what happened was he'd been living in our garage <sighs> and then one day he didn't come home. And so he'd come, he'd come and sleep in our garage at night. And then one day he didn't come back to our garage. And so I thought maybe he like needed better food or something. Right. And so I like put nice, like super nice food out. And then I just left the door all the way open. Cause I was like, maybe you could stop fucking dying. Jeff. May- maybe, maybe um, I could Kim, but I won't. And, and then he still didn't come home. And then one day I was going to work and he's a, he was a very skittish cat. Like he's skittish now. But I never in a million years would have thought that he would ever get to this point where he would, like, let us pet him and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I was going to work one morning, and it was, like, 7.30, and I saw him walking across the road, and he was just dragging his back legs behind him. Wow. Um, and that's why he hadn't been back, because he has to jump over a fence oh, to get so into no our back. Get, yeah, to get no into the get garage. There. And so the reason that he hadn't come back into the garage was because he, he physically couldn't, couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't. And so he was tr- stuck outside. Um, oh, that was long lived. No um, and so I made Mike go grab him and then we locked him in the garage and kept him on quarantine for a month in the garage. To and see then, if he'd survive? No, to make sure he didn't have cat leukemia. Oh. Um, and so he had to be quarantined for a month and then get all of his shots or get all of the shots and then be on quarantine for a month. And then we did all the stuff that the cat daddy told us to do. Um, Jackson Galaxy of My Cat from Hell. <laughs> and we read a lot of articles about how to introduce a new cat to your household. What the fuck? Oh, there was, it was a uh, floating was those, thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, our cats still hated each other. Um, and to this day, maul each other on a regular basis. Come on, Jackson Galaxy. Wait, where, where's your information? Yeah. Where are you getting your fucking information from? Because two feral cats just don't get along. Yeah. Which would make sense, actually, because to get along with a feral cat means that you're, like, not feral. You're, like, a pat cat. Yeah. Well, I did. we did learn a lot about tree dwellers and bush dwellers. Did you, you did you hear about this? No. So some cats are tree dwellers. You need to jump. And some cats are bush dwellers. Oh, that was actually, that was better, much better than normal. I just couldn't, I just can't see. Yeah. Um, so some cats like to be up on tall things and look down, okay. and other cats feel safe when they're under things. Oh, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. And so gray cat is a tree dweller, and she likes to look at things from above, and orange cat only feels safe if he's under something. Makes sense. Um, although gray cat did get in that bag, which was really fucking cute. Yeah, so you, <laughs> Jeff, you're telling me you can't get your cats to get into bags? Nope. Jeff can't get his cats into bags. I'll bring a bag over. Have you tried putting a bag out? Have you tried putting a treat in the bag? If you're putting a cat in the bag. They maybe, but you know, orange cat won't get into bags. So maybe your cats are all bush dwellers. Hey, if they don't if, like to go up on things, they like to be down. Kim, is that an expression like let the cat out of the bag? That is an expression, yeah. What does it mean? It means to um, give out it, like to let out information or like to a secret. What's you the, know, like sometimes when you fucking let out secrets in the middle of let's plays and then we have to edit them. Uh, like yes. that. Okay. So that's that's the, you let the cat out of the bag. Ah. But then due to the joys of editing, you can, put, <laughs> you can put the cat back in the bag. Right. Okay. Why is that an expression? Um, do you want me to Google it? I mean, yeah, actually, cuz that's something I legitimately don't know, but Well, you know how it. like maybe it has something to do with when you Maybe was there a time when cats were kept in bags well, right and to release them, them the early river, was a yeah. huge pro- what? Well, like, you don't you never heard about throwing cats in rivers? No. Oh. I feel like Jackson Galaxy would not approve. Oh, no. Oh, uh, the meaning. Letting the cat out of the bag is a colloquialism, meaning to reveal facts previously hidden. The facts are usually hidden from a specific target audience, your family. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, revealing a conspiracy, friendly or not, to its target. Or li- like when uh, Danielle told me that my husband was cheating on me uh, <laughs> in West Sacramento, she very, very uh, possibly could have been letting a cat out of the bag. Ah. When in reality, she just saw some guy who was bald and <laughs> thought it was my husband. <laughs> <laughs> to use it in a sentence. That's God, funny. poor Mike. Oh, man. Cats and um, bags. Etymology. Derived from uh, the... Where it comes from, we're not sure. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, nobody knows. Dude, if no one let that cat out of the bag. If Wikipedia doesn't know, fucking nobody knows. That cat is in the bag for sure. Oh. This is bad. Oh, well, that oh, was long lived. There's no way. It's, it's right over there. Okay, so one suggestion is that it comes from pig in a poke scam, where a customer thinks that they're buying a suckling pig in a sack, but it's actually a cat. Why wouldn't they just look in the sack before they bought it? Joe, I don't know. I mean, Kim, I'm just, I just want to figure this out. Because it seems important. Now, both of these suggestions were uh, rejected by Snopes.com, which I trust. Fuck! Because it's not possible to mistake a cat for a pig. No. Because it's meowing. Well, no, it'd be dead and, uh, like, uh, shaved and stuff. All right. So. Yeah, you have to be pretty dumb for that, then. Okay, yeah, let's see. Mental mean? Floss might know. Oh, um, come on, Mental Floss. Cat in a bag. They all use the same fucking image of a cat in a bag. Well, it's adorable. It's pretty cute. <laughs> uh, if you'd uh, kept up with Horse Goat Meow, today's picture was a cat in a bag. That is the same way I died twice now. Yeah, good job. Ugh. Okay, so the phrase, first documented use of the phrase was in 1760 in London Magazine, where we wish that the author had not let the cat out of the bag. It does sound very British. Ugh. Let the cat in the bag there, eh? Oh my God, fuck you. Yeah. Next time on JoJo Has Fun, we're going to have to beat this level. I okay. wish we'd made more progress what will be this week, but you know what? Um, I feel like we learned a lot Tweet at Naughty though. Dog if you have a problem. I'm, I'm doing my best. I can't, I can't help it. Yeah, look over there, Crash. Look over there what, what, you, what might be your future. It's, it's death. It's not. Bastard.